so here's an HRCT, but there's no fibrosis here, no interstitial lung disease. Here, we're really seeing a lot of emphysema, and I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to talk about the different types of emphysema. And so if you don't know what the different types of emphysema are, I encourage you guys to read this article by the Fleischner Society, published in Radiology in 2015, lead author, Dr. David Lynch. Really good paper, really easy to get through. We have a nice table or figure here that summarizes the different types of emphysema as well as the airway disease and other associated features of COPD. We have these nice examples of gross pathology with micro CT examples, and then examples on just regular chest CT of the different types of emphysema and other smoking related lung diseases and COPD. So here we have a nice example of some paraseptomphysema. So as you guys know, paraseptomphysema involves the upper lobes, most commonly the apices, usually smoking related. And then whenever you see paraseptomphysema, very common to see some central lobular emphysema. And so these are literally the center of the secondary pulmonary lobules. And so by definition, you're almost always gonna see this little dot, this vascular dot, which is a pulmonary artery, which is in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. So these are examples of central lobular emphysema. When the central lobular emphysema coalesces into each other, you start to see these areas of confluent emphysema. For example, in here, in the left upper lobe, you see multiple lobules that are diffusely involved with emphysema. Sometimes you get a little bit of dilation as well. I think we certainly see that there. So as we scroll down to lung bases, there is another type of emphysema here, which I think is difficult to see. And that's because there's really no frame of reference once you get down to lung bases. But I'll tell you, there's actually panlobular emphysema. So panlobular emphysema is gonna be at the lung bases and it involves the whole the entirety of the secondary pulmonary lobule as shown here. So we see these, these are secondary pulmonary lobules or these polygons. And so they are dilated up and are hypodense relative to normal. And so there's some more normal lung peripherally. So this is the way the lung should look more uh, in more normal patients. But then these darker areas are areas of panlobular emphysema. So here at the University of Chicago, we do MINIP imaging as well, so minimum intensity projection imaging, in addition to maximum intensity projection imaging. And so this minimum intensity projection imaging brings out areas of hypodensity. So within that slab of tissue that's being imaged, it will show you the lowest density voxel. And so we see here, we see these areas of central lobular emphysema within the upper aspect of the lungs, but then down low, we see these areas of confluent hypodensity. And this is a nice example of panlobular emphysema. And so sometimes when you're confused, what, it's nice to look at the coronal reformation. And if you have the ability to create minimum intensity projection images to see if indeed there are areas of panlobular emphysema at the lung bases. So very often the setting of panlobular emphysema, we also see basopredominant subsegmental atelectasis or scarring. So we see a little bit of scarring down here, but nothing really to call home about. So as you know, patients with this basopredominant panlobular emphysema pattern, and let's actually look at it on the minute, it's just so much more obvious here on the minute images. When you see basopredominant panlobular emphysema, it, it does have a differential diagnosis clinically, but the most common cause is gonna be alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which I know most of you guys know. But there are other causes of basal predominant panlobular emphysema. And so one of the first ones we think about is essentially excipient lung. So a IV talcosis can cause basal predominant panlobular emphysema looking essentially exactly the same as panlobular emphysema in alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So that's something else that you kind of keep in the back of your mind, especially if you know the patient is an IV drug user. So what, what is IV talcosis, especially in the setting of IV drug use? It's, it's when people get medications, so like amphetamines, which are meant to be taken orally. So they have these, these fillers in them like talc or methyl cellulose, and they put them into a solution and then they inject it intravenously. And so those particles are too big to get through the, the small capillaries of the lungs. And so they lodge down there at the lung bases and then causes granulomous reaction. 
inflammation, which causes lung destruction and results in this panlobular emphysema pattern. That's the next most common cause of panlobular emphysema. And then the, the next most common cause, or I shouldn't even say most common cause, uh, the third thing I think about, which is very rare, very, very rare. I've only seen a handful of cases of this that can cause basal predominant panlobular emphysema is something called hypocomplementemic urticarial vasculitic syndrome. Let me say it again, hypocomplementemic urticarial vasculitic syndrome. So very rare, but it does exist. And the nice thing about the name is that it tells you what to be, you should be looking for. So someone with recurrent urticarial rashes and low complement levels, and then you know that it's associated with panlobular emphysema. Uh, 